restoring the mansion that my great-great-grandfather bought almost 100 years ago for $7,000. We started this mammoth project up in the attic. We did a full demolition. We tore out all the old rotten boards, all the old rotten insulation. Birds lived up here for years. We got everything cleaned up. And then we got everything spray foam insulated. And once we got done up in the attic, we came to the upstairs and we got to work tearing out all the old plaster up here, all the lats, sucked out all the insulation tore up the floors, it got everything completely exposed. And then coming down to the main floor of the house, we did the same treatment with the lath and plaster. We pulled out all the radiators, pulled up the floors, the spray foam insulator guys came in and got everything spray foamed. We did a major demolition on the floor in the kitchen, and then we did a major demolition on the floor in the dining room. We then went hard at work at laying down the OSB sheeting. We then spent a couple days down in the basement for a full demolition and an absolutely disgusting, messy job. And then we went hard at work in the kitchen rebuilding this wall and we even built in a header board in the doorway. So this brings us to today. We need to do work underneath the stairs so today the stairs are going bye-bye. We have a little messy mess here so for us to be able to do the job we need to do a little cleanup organization so we have a room to walk and carry these steps because we think they're assembled as one piece and it was brought in here and set in place. Cleanup time. That's clean enough. Now as beautiful as these 105 year old stairs are, we are going to be taking them out for two reasons. Reason number one is at the bottom of the stairs, this wall has actually settled the floor joist below it an inch. So this side is one inch lower than this side of the stairs. So we need to get underneath of this, get everything jacked up and get it leveled out. So that way we have a level floor. And when the stairs are here, we can't do that. The second reason is we want these stairs to last us another 100 years. Justin, being the professional of the group, does not think these stairs are going to last another 100 years. They're bouncy, they're wiggly, they're squeaky as well. So we're just going with new. That way we can get everything nice and solid, no more squeaks and strong, and it'll last 100 years. But before we start tearing these things out, I just do want to take a moment to appreciate the beauty of these stairs because there was some craftsmanship that went into these 100 years ago. And when we look back 100 years from now, I guess whoever's living here 100 years from now, this is what the stairs used to look like. Starting off on the bottom, we already sawed this part off, but it used to wrap all the way around right here and it had kind of like a round point to it. I don't know why they did that because you couldn't step up on that and get up the stairs because this pole is in the way, but that used to be here. Maybe it was just like a anti toe stubbing device or something. Then as much as I would like to say these are solid corner posts and solid railings, they're not, they're manufactured somewhere. But looking at the little detail on this, we got these rectangular pieces sticking off. Everything would have been stained by my great grandmother. So, I mean, it's held up for 105 years. It actually looks pretty good. And if you don't grab onto the railing, it looks good. As we can see, the stairs do have a little bit of a wiggle to them. Now we could put a shim on the bottom and probably take that away. But this hand railing does the whole thing. There's a lot of wiggle to it. 
But even though this handrail does have a little bit of wiggle to it, it's got a nice wide wood profile to it. Normally when I've seen these in the past, they're a lot narrower. And this one's in really good condition because nobody's taking a pocket knife to it or anything and try to practice their whittling. There's really not even a single scratch on it. Here at the top of the stairs on the corner post, we do have a fair amount of sun bleaching on this as well as the steps. This window, all the argon inside of it must have disappeared over time. And the argon is what's trapped between the window is the gas that's in there. And it protects the harmful UV rays of the sun from damaging and bleaching the wood. So right here we didn't have that. There was no shade over the window. So for years and years and years, this area was just getting beat by the sun. And so all the wood up here is bleached. See how the inside of that window is nice and wet? Like I'm touching it right now. It's on the inside of the inside pane. That's how I know that the argon is missing from the inside of the window because one of the seals around it must be bad because otherwise we would not have any moisture in there. This staircase is also equipped with a double landing system. So I'm on the first landing and then we take two more steps up and then we get to the second landing and then we got another set of stairs that'll finish the rest of the way upstairs. One of our railing pieces is missing here, but we go up on the top. We have this beautiful railing. They were able to bend this somehow. I don't know how they did it years ago, but this is also in in pristine condition. It's the nice wide wood handle. Nobody put took a pocket knife to it. Everything looks good up here on the bars. This is actually a solid one. So I don't know what they did different on this one versus the railings down below. Maybe it just got less wear and tear over time. This is in really nice condition. This is this is nice railing. It's probably a good thing that this railing was nice and strong because it's a long way down to the ground. So they definitely wanted to make sure nobody was gonna be falling off that down there. We do have an interesting observation right here. This is a nice bent corner instead of being a squared out corner. And it's funny, they took this top plate board right here and they must've taken a big square piece of wood and then actually cut this bend out to it. But when it comes to the piece below it, they did a pretty interesting technique on this. They made little slits about every inch all the way through this entire board. And then we don't know if they would have dipped it in some water, maybe use some steam or something, but then they bent it and then all the little slits that they cut, they didn't cut all the way through. So still strong on the front side, but weak on the back. Opened up those slits and allowed them to bend it into this form. And then it looks like they took little shims and they stuck it inside those slits, put some glue in it. And then here we are 105 years later with it still perfectly shaped in that nice bend. So that's pretty cool. Based on other things we found in the house that were built in add-on items, we think these stairs were in the exact same way. These were manufactured somewhere from everything else that we were able to find, all the stickers on everything else in the house. Some factory in Chicago probably made these. So they would have been put together there and then assembled here, which, Honestly, I'm pretty impressed with how long they've held up and how well they are still to this day. All right, Justin, what's the game plan for tearing these things out? I don't know. Roman, grab a side. Pick it up. Justin, be careful with that masterpiece. I am. I'm just... Are you sure you didn't need help? I got it, Chief. Hey, what are you doing with my stairs? I thought I paid the bill. <laughs> you can't just come and Where? take these. You don't pay. We're taking it back. Sorry. You don't, you don't drop it. We might have to put it back after he pays us. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 
surprisingly are heavier than I thought they would be. <laughs> yep, solid home. <laughs> Ah, son of a biscuit. Nail? Yup. Several of them. Stop complaining. You're fine. It's just nails. Justin's just thinking, how can I get out of work today? Ooh, you still got a in my hand. Should I stand on it? No, you should not stand on it. If you're gonna stand on it, Roman, at least hold the camera, because the cameraman never dies. That's true. You think it's a sawzall? No, it's a reciprocating saw. Makes you wonder how much time they had to spend on just this post, mortising all that out on three sides, all four sides. I wonder if they were getting paid by the hour. <laughs> Do you know what jumping jack is? A jumping jack? Yep. It's a packer. Correct. Stork beak pliers? Stork? Stork beak would pliers. Be, would be pliers that like needle nose but a little bent in yep. them. Yep. A tooth chisel? Tooth chisel? Mm -hmm. Tooth chisel. Tooth chisel. No, it's not something. <laughs> it like the chisel is a bunch of little teeth. You got it. <laughs> Triple tap. I can envision it as, let me think, so, and Cole, you might check if I'm right. Justin is looking at Klein tool, and it looks like tap, cone shape tap, then one another, tap and die tool. Did I get it right, Justin? Yep. Did I get it right? Mm-hmm. What is You must have looked at the same website I'm looking at. A cape chisel? Roman, do you know what a... Plumb bob is? Yes. Plumb bob is a tool that probably has been used for centuries. It's a basically just a weight tied up to the rope and because of the gravity it will pull perfectly plumb vertical line but plumb bob actually it's a little <coughs> weight that cone with a coned nose. What is a draw tool? A draw knife. Draw knife. A draw knife? Oh, that's easy. Uh, do you have your? Don't make Do you stuff have your box up. cutter? Don't no, I'm going to show you. I have to give you an example. I don't have box cutter. Okay, I have look. Utility knife. You take two people back to back, and then you go one, two, three. And you draw it out, and then it's. Holy! Oh, <laughs> you just about threw that knife at him. 
Let's take that. What? HR, <laughs> what is this on the job site? How'd you have that in your pocket like that? Why? <laughs> it's a draw knife. <laughs> that would have hurt. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the house that has absolutely no stairs over here anymore. This looks weird. You can see where the old line used to be. We have the platform line down below, up above. You can follow the stair line up to the top platform. <laughs> and the coolest thing about it, all this, I don't know if it's cool or not, but this just shows how dramatic the floor settled underneath the stairs. Check this out. See this green line on the floor? This is from Roman's laser. So the whole room has a perfectly level laser line all the way around it. Right here, it's at the bottom of the plate. And just a few feet away on the other side of the room where the bottom of the stairs used to be, the laser line is at the top of the plate. We have over an inch and a quarter drop from what it's supposed to be to where it is over here. So this wall has settled an inch and a quarter. Now that we don't have the stairs here anymore, we can get that fixed. If you look at this exterior wall, that spray foam, that is sitting on the foundation of the house. We cannot change the elevation of that, but this wall can move. And watch the laser line once we get onto this wall, how all of a sudden the laser line works its way further and further up the plate as we get down to the end. From the floor we're standing on to the ceiling up there is about 18, 19 feet. What do you guys think of a 20 foot ceiling in a house? You think we should do that like in my bedroom or something? <laughs> that would be tall ceiling. Are you scared of heights? No. Would you have a rope going all the way up so you can do exercises? No, but I would have a singular ceiling fan up there with the little rope hanging off of it be like this long so that way nobody could reach it. And the rope beside so you can climb up and pull on it. <laughs> and we might be onto something, Roman. It looks like Neva just pulled in and she has not seen the inside of the house yet at all since we started working on this. So she's gonna be in for a little bit of surprise. Head bladder though, get asses. <laughs> Hola. Oh my goodness. <gasps> what? Wow. Ed, do you even recognize your own home? Cool, the floor is level. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I can see it now. I love it. The mm -hmm. kitchen is huge. <laughs> Who's over there? Roman. It's beautiful, Cole. You guys have been doing such a good job. I wasn't expecting to walk into this, I'm not gonna lie. Wow. Go get him, Edward. Go get him, bud. <laughs> Is he happy? Yeah. <laughs> He's just looking around like, oh what's my, going on? It looks like a whole new place. Also, hey, hi. <laughs> also, why does it kind of look smaller now that things are opened up? Everybody says it looks smaller when it's open. I think it looks bigger. You think so? Hey, Cole, it looks completely different. I mean, obviously, right? Tell me what you've done. So, okay, this is this wall has been torn down. I don't even know what's happening here in the entryway. Is there a wall here? Yeah, it's that one. Jeez, this kitchen is huge. Yeah. I love this. I love that this is all flat. What, what you got there, Edward? Is that Justin's hammer? Oh, you got his pencils. Oh, good job, buddy. Good job. You got his pencils. All right, bud, you're going to need to go find some nails. Yeah, Edward, go get to work. <laughs> Almost. But Edward, that's gross. That's gross. What do you think? I think it, it's beautiful, cool. I think you guys can. Uh, I don't know, I'm speechless. Obviously you guys have put a lot of work into this and I'm so proud of you guys. It looks good. There's two different types of people in construction. There's the people who can look at something 
and just envision it. What it's going to look like when it's done, when you move this wall here, you, you can picture that in your head before anything is done. I am like that. Neva, on the other hand, is the other type of person in construction where they need to see the actual changes in order for them to understand. I make out some blueprints, I show Neva, she's like, I think I get it, but when I see it, I'll actually understand it a lot better. So she's been looking at my blueprints for a long time, and now that she's actually stepping in here and seeing it, that's why it's such a big shock for her because she's like, wow, all the blueprints I've been looking at, now I can actually visualize this and I get, it's coming true. Like <laughs> we're building this house. This is awesome. Getting these stairs out actually turned out way, way, way better than I anticipated it to be. I thought everything was gonna get hung up on this wall. I thought getting both of those platforms off was gonna be an absolute nightmare. And then that top bit of stairs, I mean, I could just see that having a bunch of difficulties and it's difficult up there because it's high. It's not like you're two feet off the ground where you have good leverage. Like you can only lift so much when you're standing on the top of a ladder. But Justin and Roman knew what they were doing and they got this thing tore out in no time. So major, major daunting task completed. No more stairs. Now we have full access to everything down here on the main floor for being able to get things rebuilt, being able to get things moved. We have full access to all the ceiling stuff. So when we take out walls, we'll be able to build in header boards. I am very happy to get this staircase out of here today. But with that being said, it's starting to get dark out. Everybody went home, we are tired. Don't forget to check out the link in the description. You can pick up some Cornstar Farms merch or head to cornstar.farm. Otherwise, that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.